but you know the numbers that we've been seeing and the patterns that actually call out these numbers it's 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 in your face all the time i didn't make it a career but i've forgotten more about chemistry than most people know right and a vaccine is tested for 10 years this particular type of vaccine should be tested for longer so any vaccine that is purported as safe by a government which requires indemnification to the manufacturer be scary bits are the only mitigating factor for people to overcome when they're juggling, oh my God, with COVID's gonna get me, COVID's gonna get me, you know, like, 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 like the monster that lived under their bed when they were three. That's the cycle we gotta break. So somebody called out that, oh, they, she doesn't have time to call shout when she sees it. You know, she can't be bothered. She would rather opt out. And I was like, well, you know, I, I, I wish I could do that because, you know, and, and she was talking about it under the, the same sort of circumstances as well. You know, the censorship, the risk to commercial interests, the risk to um, being perceived as right wing, um, yeah. you know, by prospective uh, clients and customers and prospective right. employers. So I, I hear you. I mean, you know, I, I can't I can't afford to be perceived as right wing. Yeah. I mean, and, and that is why when people try and make out that I am right wing, I take them to task over it. You know, I, I, I engage with them and I say, well, hang on a minute. Why do you think that? And here's why you're wrong. You know, and I, I stand by my my take on anything, really, until I'm proved otherwise. And if you're good enough to prove me otherwise, have at it. You know, and I, I find that acceptable. People do, don't find that behavior acceptable and actually try and make me um, pose restrictions upon me for having engaged with these people in the first place. You know, I, I can't sleep properly if I give up in such a fashion, you know, and, and I might actually be able to provide myself with the means to live to see another sunset, but I wouldn't enjoy it. Yeah. And, and that's the way I'm built. And I... Yeah, I, 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 I understand that the fear of being perceived to want to behave like that and be wrong is, is a factor in, in some people's lives, especially professionally, professionally or in a casual basis. You know, it's a close-knit community in Wales, and we stand up for each other, and it's very Celtic in that manner. And I tell you what, right, if... if any amount of large pieces come down the pipeline. I mean, the Welsh are going to have something to say about it. <laughs> okay, man. You know? And That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm just one of them. And for me, deliberately ignoring counterproductive or even under some circumstances, downright unhealthy rhetoric, which affects the greater good, is a form of cowardice. Right, yeah. Running away from... That kind of argument, that kind of debate. I mean, it's a form of cowardice. And what on earth could allow somebody to subscribe to the deliberate undermining of global society in such a fashion? I mean, there's got to be something we don't know. <laughs> I wonder how they. I wonder how they get to them. I mean, I think it's a combination of what it's always been: threat and inducement. You know that they set a trap, a spider's web. You know, a web. Where they they realize they're they're trapped, you know, and and they 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 it's like economic hitmen. They make an offer that uh, that uh, that a that a country's leader can't refuse, and the country's leader realizes that what's going to happen? They'll send in the jackals, you know, day of the jackal. It's going to come unless you get with me on this. And you don't know for John Perkins, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. It's absolutely your kind of guy to read. Yeah. And he gives thorough accounts of this. He did this in, in Guatemala. He did it in countries across the world, in Asia and elsewhere, until he got to the point where he couldn't take it. And he was the perfect profile, a little bit borderline himself, uh, ethically sort of flexible guy. He wanted adventure. He wanted sex. He wanted all of the, uh, you know, all of that, that which came with the power and the access he would be granted if he just did this right thing for his government. And uh, he, was a, he was all of that until he wasn't. 
And then he wrote these books and they're, they're outstanding. And the guys, I think quite authentic. And he gives account of all of this and how you put these very decent leaders in a very tight spot. And he explains very emotionally how, um, uh, who was it, guys that he tried to get to but wouldn't take it because they had integrity ended up dead. And he looks back on that, you know, morbidly and he knows why they're dead, you know, and he was part of it one way or the other. And I think with these guys who get got, they're one way or the other, they just, they're either marked in the beginning as guys that are, will go along because they have high needs for conformity to norms and standards that determine success and confer status in this life. And they have, they're very needy that way. I think Colbert, Colbert is absolutely could have been profiled by these guys because he's that type. Uh, John Oliver, almost certainly the same type. They profile them and they look for super talented guys who have this dark need and they figure out that they're going to groom them. I think this, I think they play a very long game. These guys play a very long game. And I think that they are out scouring for these talents at young ages. They, they, they find these guys at a young age and they get courted. In many instances, they're courted or they're guided in ways they don't even know. But good shit happens to them they can't quite explain. You know, yeah. why was I lucky? How did I get that break? Who made the call? You know, they're smart enough to figure it out. There's, there has been a renewed cachet in all things British in American culture over the last 15 years. We make good bad guys. We know this. You make good bad guys, but also culturally in our decline of our own empire, we're seeking uh, cultural capital from the mother country, is my theory. Yeah, good and that the, that the British know how to do a charm in the face of declining fortunes in ways that Americans are, are, are being groomed to understand they need to know more about. I, I really think that as part of the presence more and more in, in our show business of British this, that, and the other is, I, yeah. yeah. Anyway, just a theory.